2020, a year to remember. 2020 brought new challenges. 2020, you rose to the occasion. To build community strong. Hi, I'm Bonnie Brady. I'm this year's chair of the Recreation Committee. Hi, I'm Lori Moffitt, and I'm co-chair of the City's Culture Committee. This is the 40th annual City of Niagara Falls Volunteer Recognition Awards. Hi, this is Mayor Jim from Niagara Falls City Hall in Council Chambers. This year to introduce the 2020 40th anniversary of the Volunteer Recognition Awards. Of course, this year it's going to look a little different than past years. When you look at the pictures, you'll remember what happened this year. You'll see masks, you'll see hand sanitizer. This year we want to especially acknowledge all the people that have gone above and beyond and volunteered to help their community through a real challenging time. And why do people volunteer? Well, lots of different reasons. Some people do it because they know it extends your life and people that volunteer are typically healthier. Also, some people volunteer because their spouse made them get out of the house and they were tired of them and they wanted them to get out and do something else. Get out of my hair! Today is gonna be about acknowledging and congratulating all those people that have done so much to make Niagara Falls a better place. Congratulations to everyone. Look forward to the following Volunteer Recognition Awards Ceremony. Hang tight. The annual Volunteer Awards allow local organizations a chance to honor their valuable volunteers. Here are the 2020 individual volunteer recipients. allows local organizations to recognize and honor their corporate sponsors. Here are the recipients for the 2020 Corporate Sponsor Award. are given to individuals who have gone above and beyond and these individuals have been nominated by you the community the next category is the BNF awards now what are the BNF awards someone who wears Niagara Falls on their sleeve somebody who creatively helps their community and why do we call it the BNF awards well, it's what we call a double entendre. And what does that mean? Well, you could see it as be Niagara Falls, and of course, you wanna be what it is to be a Niagara Falls resident. Or if you say it quickly, it's be enough, or be enough. Like that, it's got dual meaning, double entendre, be enough, or be enough. And what does that look like? Well. Especially this year, we're looking for the unsung heroes, the people that just keep doing great things in our community. And we wanted one person, and we couldn't find one person. Instead, we found dozens of people in our community who are doing the right thing for their neighbors. And that might have been cutting someone's grass, delivering their groceries, making masks, maybe making meals for people, whatever the case may be. We want to say thank you for being enough Thank you for winning one of these BNF awards because you are the example of what it is to be, to be a Niagara Falls resident. Thank you.
This award is presented to a youth resident 21 years of age or younger who demonstrates a true commitment to our community by their volunteer work. The service that they provide goes well above and beyond any volunteer service required by their school. This year's Youth Volunteer of the Year Award recipient is Wahiba Ahmed. Wahiba is currently in her first year at Brock University, majoring in medical sciences and minoring in political science. Giving back is a big part of Wahiba's life. Throughout high school, she was extremely involved in extracurricular, spending hours after school every day to help in clubs, at activities, and with student needs. She was an integral part of the Key Club and was president during her final two years. In her final year of high school, she tutored younger students in math, helping them to boost their grades and confidence in the subject. She also had major roles in St. Paul's Student Council, where she helped organize, plan, and execute student body activities, and was secretary for her final year. Outside of high school, Wahiba was equally busy. She volunteered at the Greater Niagara General Hospital on weekends and served on the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee for three years. In her last year on MIAC, she was elected as co-chair leading a group of talented high school students. Additionally, Wahiba serves as a certified medical first responder with St. John's Ambulance. She is trained in CPR, and advanced first aid and volunteers at community events to provide first aid if necessary. Now in university, she is continuing to give back by taking part in Brock's Heart and Stroke Foundation and in the Model UN program. She is an amazing role model for her peers. Congratulations, Wahiba. I am currently in my first year at Brock University, majoring in medical sciences, minoring in political sciences, and I have already joined a couple of organizations um, at Brock, such as Model UN, uh, Brock U Health Association, and I will be continuing to volunteer at St. John's Hospital as a medical first responder and at the local hospital. I volunteer because it gives me the opportunity to give back uh, to the community and it allows me to meet new people and it's quite fun. Because of the circumstances of the pandemic, a lot of the organizations I am currently involved with had to cancel their events. When I was in grade 12, I was the co-chair of the subcommittee called Giving Back and uh, we pitched uh, a new idea for uh, Mental Health Awareness Week which was the mental health barbecue. And that was amazing that uh, my team and I, we planned that so well. And it, w it went off without a hitch and it was, it was probably one of my favorite events that uh, we held. Uh, the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee holds a special place in my heart. I've met a lot of friends uh, on there who I think are friendships that are gonna last a lifetime. And I've learned uh, so many things and I've met so many great people, and um, it's just, it was an amazing experience. Don't be afraid to pitch any new ideas, um, even if they're out of the box and totally crazy. Um, be confident and be you. This award is presented to a senior resident, 60 years of age or older, who demonstrates a true commitment to our community by their volunteer work. The service that they provide goes above and beyond and makes a significant impact on the community. This year's Senior Volunteer of the Year is Tony Zamet. Tony and his wife Sandy moved to Niagara Falls about four years ago to be closer to his mother-in-law. He immediately got involved with the soup kitchen as a volunteer on Friday nights and quickly became the volunteer ambassador extraordinaire with the local Friday night high school volunteers. Tony ensures that the student volunteers feel important and valued. They all work with a smile on their face because of his infectious enthusiasm. He became a dishwasher expert and shared his knowledge and appreciation for cleanliness with all the students working at the kitchen. Recently, in the midst of the pandemic, he jumped at the chance to fill the property manager position. He was instrumental in ensuring that the kitchen was compliant with the Ministry of Labor and the Ministry of Health in creating manuals and bulletin boards. As an active board member for the soup kitchen, 
and its volunteer property manager. Tony is doing the work at the kitchen most days, weekly and monthly deep cleaning, maintaining garbage area, fixing everything that needs fixing. Tony cares deeply about the plight of the less fortunate in our community and drives around on hot days distributing cold water to the unsheltered. In addition, he helps out with many other volunteer groups who are working tirelessly to help those in need. He delivers for Care for Cause and No One Goes Hungry and is always looking for other ways to support people in need. His energy and enthusiasm is contagious and he truly lives his email sign-off in service, Tony Zamet. Congratulations, Tony. You truly deserve it. When I actually got the phone call, I thought I was getting punked. And I had to ask twice to make sure that I was the person that they were talking about. Ladies, there's 40, maybe 50 of you. I'm representing all of you. So I'm just unbelievably touched that I'm getting considered for this award. But I'd really like to share this award with probably 30 or 40 women in the Niagara region that helped me get to where I am today. So this is a reflection of your time and your commitment with me as well. I started out as a dishwasher and I progressed to be the maintenance person. So if there's anything that needs attending, if there's anything that needs cleaned, anything that needs fixed, and you want to believe there's a lot of that in that building, um, I try to attend to that. I have just recently um, been awarded a position on the board at the soup kitchen. When you have you know, anywhere from 150 to 170 people coming through, and then all of a sudden you, you shut down service, it, it affects you. And then we started to see across all of Niagara Falls and even extended beyond that other places were closing down. And it really tore me apart to know that there were still people out there that needed help and how could we get to them. To the soup kitchen's credit, they pivot very quickly. Although we don't have seated service, we do a bagged to go lunch every day. The mothers or the families who have lost a loved one and who have come to the soup kitchen or have come to one of the organizations in memory of the ones that they lost to try to do good works for them. I know that they're in pain. I know that they're suffering, but the fact that they can continue to try to help those in our community going through unimaginable loss. I think that's a memory that'll stay with me until the day I die. When you go to volunteer, there's not anything specific that you have to look for, whether it's a one-time activity, whether it's a long-term commitment, whether you can donate, whether you can um, just advocate for the group, get on social media, it really is incredible that one event that you do. And I always say, if you can do one act of random kindness towards somebody, that'll get you started. One take, Tony. Wait, wait, this award is presented to those citizens, groups, businesses, industry or organizations residing or working in the city of Niagara Falls who have made a significant contribution toward the protection or enhancement of the city's environment. This year's Environment Award recipient is Landcare Niagara. Landcare Niagara is committed to creating a healthy and sustainable rural and urban environment that includes citizens who are knowledgeable and active in land resource management. As a not-for-profit community-based organization, they seek to provide services and information through educational outreach, training initiatives, and land stewardship activities. The Park in the City Committee and Land Care Niagara have been long-standing partners in committing to forestry stewardship within the city of Niagara Falls. Together, they have developed many community-based tree planting events and programs that engage residents to participate in positive environmental activities. Landcare Niagara has supported many tree planting projects throughout the city in parks, along trails, 
as well as pollinator garden installations at Fairview Cemetery and Fernwood Woodlot Park. Land Care Niagara was successful in acquiring grants from TD Friends of the Environment to help plant over 1,200 tree seedlings at various locations in Niagara Falls over the past several years. Annually, the organization has been a lead supporter in the Schools in Bloom program by providing complimentary trees to all schools that participate. Congratulations, Landcare Niagara. On behalf of Landcare Niagara, I'd like to thank the City of Niagara Falls um, for this year's Environmental Award. We're a not-for-profit, non-government organization that um, strives at uh, basically nat naturalizing Niagara. Uh, we did a, a volunteer planting at Fireman's Park actually with Niagara Falls. And um, yeah, just the, the overall attendance and, and um, the spirit of everybody was, um, was really high. Just like every kid outside playing in the woods or, or uh, going on hikes with, with family members and things like that. Um, it's always been kind of deeply rooted in me to, to be kind of a, a part of the, the environment. Just reach out um, if you feel like that you want to get outside and, and do something good for the environment, then just uh, reach out through email or social media um, and just take the step of, of becoming involved yourself. This award is presented to those residents who demonstrate a true commitment to our community and help make the city a nicer, cleaner place in which to live by making a difference to the daily lives of those who live in Niagara Falls. This year's Civic Pride Award recipient is Wally Friesman. Wally is a consummate community volunteer, an unsung hero who quietly goes about helping and contributing wherever he is able. He's one of those individuals that loves his community and wants to assist in any way possible to make it a better place for everyone to live. Wally runs a car show every July to raise money for the community. He organizes and runs the show on an entirely volunteer basis. He selects a different charity each year and has supported the Niagara Falls Humane Society and the Chippewa Lions Club and plans to support the Chippewa Fire Department next year. This year, Wally raised money for a family whose father and husband is going through a cancer diagnosis and treatment. Wally has a deep love for Chippewa and keeps the dock in the area clean and litter free. In addition, he volunteers at Cruising on the Queue, Cruise Niagara and Welland, and is always there for anyone who needs help. Congratulations, Wally, on this award. You certainly deserve it. The Civic Pride Award means to me uh, a lot. Uh, I do a lot for the community. Uh, well, I try to, anyways, uh, every year. Because uh, I love Chippewa, I love Niagara Falls. Me and my friend uh, Ray St. Jean, we organized a trunk or treat in uh, Chippewa this past Saturday. Big success. And I'd like to thank all the people who came out for that. All the people at Chippewa that uh, donated candy <laughs> for the kids so it'd be safe, fun for the, for the children during COVID. I also run my own car show. I have many supporters and I run my own cruise night in uh, Chippewa and I make absolutely no money from it. I, uh, I don't the money I make or receive, I donate to charity every year. And I have a lot of, actually my boss is a big supporter too, is Jessica Gale. She supports me every year. Through the 50-50, I'm there 50-50. I have the biggest mouth, so <laughs> I yell out there. I, I get them uh, buying 50-50. With me helping out, I make a lot more money for them because I have the biggest mouth and it's probably because they want me to shut up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come and get your 50-50. Dig deep in those pockets. Grab that money hand. $5, 50-50. <laughs> I'd like to thank the city of Niagara Falls also for honoring me with this great Civic Pride Award, the mayor and everybody involved. Thank you. I'm always looking for help every year when I, uh, you know, run my show if COVID 
ever ends <laughs> if I'm on my show. Just look me up on Facebook, Dukes of Niagara, that's me. The Doug Austin Award is a special award presented each year by the Niagara Falls Review. Doug Austin was a sports editor at the Niagara Falls Review for over 30 years. The award was started in 1982 prior to his death and is presented to a person in the community who dedicated volunteer service and accomplishments in sports. This year's Doug Austin Award recipient is Jeff Allen. Jeff has been an avid baseball player his entire life. After playing for Taft College in California on a scholarship, he returned home and played for numerous teams in Ontario that include the Hamilton Cardinals, Brantford Red Sox, and he is still an active player for the Niagara Falls Expos. These days, his passion is coaching the next generation. Jeff currently holds a position with the Greater Niagara Baseball Association Executive as Coach of Player Development and has been a very active coach for many years. Jeff is dedicated to helping kids reach their potential both on and off the field. For the past few years, Jeff has helped coach Team Ontario who brought home a championship in 2018. He was also the coach of the Falcons travel team and was head coach of the team that suffered the tragic loss of player Cole Donoff during the season. Coach Jeff gave his eulogy at his funeral. On top of coaching numerous baseball teams, he also helps coach youth hockey and has taken on a position with Brock University's baseball team in player development. Most recently, Jeff has been selected as the sport lead for baseball at the 2022 Canada Summer Games. All this while working full-time as a Niagara Falls professional firefighter and raising three children with his wife, Shannon. Congratulations, Jeff. I wasn't expecting anything like this. I'd like to thank Doug Austin for um, dedicating 30 years to covering local sports in Niagara Falls. Um, it's an honor to be win an award named after somebody, although I'm not from originally from Hamilton. Uh, I'm originally from Hamilton, not Niagara Falls, but I was able to ask a lot of local sports people just who Doug was and what he meant to the community, and he sounds like a wonderful man. Um, I'd also like to thank Justin Canistrero for nominating me for this award. Uh, when you volunteer, you know, you don't do it for this, for the awards, but it's definitely nice to be recognized, um, especially by, by the City of Niagara Falls and Niagara Falls Review. I'm a member of the Greater Niagara Baseball Association, which has been around almost 90 years now. You know, awards like this are nice, but it's smiles that you put on people's face, and I think if you have knowledge in something, whether it be sport, art, culture, whatever it might be, um, knowledge is useless without passing it along. I've gone from 15, 16, and 18 year olds in, Ni in Niagara Falls um, to right down to the eight year olds. So it's fun to, uh, I'm looking forward to coming up with the, with the young guys and uh, you know, developing a full athletic program for the guys that from the, those young ages. The fact that we were able to get a, a safe program off the ground here in Niagara Falls, it took a ton of work from a ton of people. Everyone knows who they were, uh, especially the coaches that were sanitizing, to keeping attendance, keeping distance, having co parents in the parking lot. I would say this year the big thing was actually getting off the ground and, and we probably played close to uh, over 100 games I would say with our local Niagara Falls kids so that would d definitely be uh, something this year. We had a tragedy in our 16th year with losing one of our players. Um, just to see the kids from that first group that I coached, uh, just to see them start university and they're getting jobs and driving and, and they still reach out for just life questions like you know uh, what do you think about taking this in school or that's what you know at the end of the day wins and losses are, are you know what we why we play the sport but it's the off the field stuff with just kids just keeping in touch with them and just you know I look forward to friendships uh, past that and hopefully I can help them and, and they help me a lot as well a massive thank you to my wife and kids uh, there's no way on earth I'd be able to do this the amount of hours that I spend at the ballparks and traveling this province and country uh, coaching baseball. So a, a huge th thank you to my family and friends. I just think coaches deserve you know, a, a big thank you to, to every, everybody out there that's doing it because it's not easy.
the Stanford Collegiate Alumni Association Award in memory of Barbara Frum. This award is presented to an individual or organization who has enhanced the quality of our lives by virtue of their outstanding contribution to fostering and developing arts and culture opportunities in Niagara Falls. Barbara Frum was a well-known and respected journalist, interviewer, and commentator in print, radio, and television. The recipient of this year's Barbara Frum Award is Karen Stern. Many people will recognize Karen as the Executive Director of Heart Niagara, a position she has held since 1997. What some may not realize is that Karen has volunteered in Niagara Falls for more than 40 years and always strives to link community, health, art, and culture into events and initiatives. Karen has served on countless boards and committees and campaigns and continually gives of her time and expertise. Some recent highlights of her contributions include assisting to organize and implement the Festival of Trees for seven years, showcasing Niagara artists and their eye for decorating trees, creating a walking museum in downtown Niagara Falls using Canada 150 heritage posters, including live entertainment and art demonstrations and all event planning, supporting and assisting in the development of an online music program, an alley and laneway project to highlight talent and history by connecting artists and businesses for collaboration. Karen continues to e increase access to events and installations that build community capacity, linking healthy living, social responsibility, and Niagara Falls culture. Congratulations, Karen. Well, certainly I would like to thank our community and the people that uh, nominated me. It's uh, very nice to be recognized. It's not necessary, but always welcome. So thank you for that. And what an honor to be recognized uh, in the namesake of a woman like Barbara Frum. I'm here, I've been volunteering for Canadian Mental Health, for uh, Project Share, for Heart Niagara, for the Downtown BIA, uh, Boys and Girls Club. I think over the years, who's ever needed some support, I've been able to provide it because I really incorporated volunteering into who I was, and that was my social life, and still is. So I moved to Niagara Falls in 1979, and I said I did all my growing up in this town, and I've been very lucky and had a wonderful life here, and my dad always says, leave the road better than you found it, so building community capacity is what I've always done. I was coming to work, listening to the radio, and when Meals on Wheels had to deliver meals, most of their volunteers are older, and I guess older than me. So I called and said, in the short term, our office is not busy, I'd be happy to volunteer or anything else you'd like me to do. And Marianne called me back and said, we need space. So Heart Niagara was able to actually host Meals on Wheels for the last seven months, and they put out 600 meals a week. I don't know if people know that. So downtown was able to help one more time by coming forward, so you really don't know what your volunteer opportunity is till you get there. I may not always be popular, but they certainly know what I say is what I mean. And so, yeah, I work pretty hard for the city. Just get out and volunteer. The first call you make will be the hardest. The first event you go to will be the strangest, and then it just gets easier and easier. This award is presented to an individual or organization who has displayed an outstanding volunteer contribution in recreation to the citizens of Niagara Falls. The award is made in memory of George McPhail, a former Niagara Falls Elementary School Vice Principal and a longtime dedicated member of the City of Niagara Falls Recreation Committee. This year's George McPhail Award recipient is Deborah Toth. Deborah is a fourth degree black belt in karate who trained in martial arts for almost 40 years. She started her own martial arts school in Niagara Falls and taught martial arts professionally for almost 35 years. Deborah mentored countless students, developing skills and confidence. Integral to Deborah's approach is the instillment of the value based learnings of respect, compassion, gratitude, 
and community outreach. She continually coordinated opportunities for her students to give back to the community and encouraged them to continue to do so on their own. Deborah lived what she taught and she has been a community advocate and volunteer for over 40 years. She has donated hundreds of memberships to fundraising events, created a martial arts scholarship fund to assist children and youth to get involved and stay involved, and was a dedicated member of many committees and boards. Although her accomplishments in karate are outstanding, especially as a woman in a male-dominated sport, her volunteer contributions to Niagara Falls and to fighting for equity and justice are equally outstanding. She is a trailblazer for women in martial arts and a social justice warrior. Deborah is a shining example of someone sharing their passion and skills to make the community a better place. Deborah is now retired, but her legacy lives on in her students. Congratulations, Deborah. I'm so happy to get this award. It's such a great feeling, because what it means to me is that there was a, there's a lot of goodwill in the community that's coming my way, and that feels so wonderful. That's awesome, that's awesome. <laughs> just, I tried to say astonishing and awesome at the, same, at the same time. I was born into a family of boys as the only girl, and um, it struck me very, very young that uh, there was a double standard and that the world wasn't set up the way I thought it should be. Um, I thought that I could fix it. And actually I just had a driving passion to make things right. I really volunteered with a lot, but the majority of my time has been with uh, the Women's Place of South Niagara. I've been with them for Oh, well over 30 years, I think, in various roles. Social justice for women, respect for women, um, work to end violence against women. Those are the most important things to me. And so, uh, plus, um, it's absolutely wonderful working for Women's Place. They're the nicest people ever. Um, they're great friends. They're very supportive. I learned so much. Just recently, I came out publicly supporting the women's shelter. As a survivor of the women's shelter, as someone that has been helped by the women's shelter. And so that was a bit difficult to do, but also I felt like I was really making a big contribution by saying, hey, look, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. It's just a joy to work towards something that you strongly believe in, like I always have. That's why it's been like 40. Over 40 years I've worked for uh, gaining, to try to gain respect for women, inclusion for women. It's more than giving your life meaning. It's giving your life fun, enjoyment, um, all these wonderful extras. So follow your passion. Congratulations. We are so proud to thank and honor our amazing volunteers and sponsors who continue to make the city of Niagara Falls a great place to live. It is the many volunteers in our community who are keeping our city clean and safe, providing opportunities for people to grow and play, feeding people, providing assistance wherever they can. 2020 volunteers, thank you for demonstrating how we came together to build community strong.